You could be using your computer for a variety of important tasks, including managing your money using popular programs like Quicken. Maybe you're using MS Money, performing online and PC-based banking or other financial management tasks, scanning important documents and saving them on your PC, or storing other types of personal information such as documents and photographs. This service will ensure that your PC and its networking equipment is properly configured and that you have the appropriate level of safeguards in place to greatly minimize common security threats like the ones from our friend here. Using these safeguards means that you can relax and know your important data is safe even when the kids or others are using your PC. The lessons are video based and will show you exactly what to do on your PC screen step by step. As you go through this process, you'll gain valuable information as a Windows PC owner so you know just what to do and how to remain safe in the future. This system is organized into three security levels, basic, moderate, and advanced. Level one includes the basic security steps that should be important to every PC user, regardless of knowledge or security need. We'll take a look at your home networking configuration. We'll make sure that if you use a wireless router for a wireless laptop that it's secure. We'll review your password and firewall protection and cover other important Windows security settings. In addition, we'll check that your internet browser security settings are correct and that your antivirus software settings are also correctly configured. Level 2 includes the moderate security steps with additional safeguards that should be performed by anyone that keeps important personal information on their PC. This section will include a review of your internet DSL or cable modem, which is how you connect to the outside world. We'll make sure that your PC BIOS software, which comes from your PC manufacturer, and the drivers which your hardware components rely on are also current. We'll review your network addressing and configurations, review software update settings and procedures, and finally we'll look at your NTFS file system and security settings. Level 3 is the advanced security level, providing the highest level of security and peace of mind. This includes more advanced but very important techniques. We recommend that these steps be completed by a PC user that has basic understanding of Windows files and directories and that you're familiar with the location of your important files and that you're also okay with running simple commands as directed. Remember that all of these steps will be clearly shown in the video lessons. In this section, we'll cover the benefits of separating Windows operating system files from your personal data files, as well as how to make all the changes necessary. We'll review the options of using data encryption, as well as all the steps needed to implement it. Next, we'll look at options for data backup and recovery. Finally, we'll review the concepts and steps required to back up your Windows 7 operating system and recover it in the event of a PC hardware failure, virus infection, or other emergency. It's important to remember that each of these security steps should be implemented in the order that they are presented, starting with basic, then moving on to moderate, and then finally advanced. You may wonder which level is best for you. Remember that anytime you add security to your system, you may add steps to your normal routine. One common example is passwords. Sure, it's simple to log in without a password, but of course that creates a dangerous risk for you and your personal information. When you add password protection, then you add additional steps of entering that password each time you log into your PC. These and other simple extra steps are a small price to pay for the security and peace of mind that they provide. Feel free to review this introduction video, as well as the basic, moderate, and advanced videos as many times as necessary to get comfortable with the system and all the tasks that you'll be performing. This will help you be ready for what's coming up. Whenever considering security for your PC, you should address these five areas to ensure that you have all, quote, layers secured. Addressing only one or two of these layers will leave undesired gaps in your security plan. It would be like locking your front door at home while leaving the back sliding glass door wide open. The five levels we're concerned with that we'll cover in this series are physical security, network security, PC security, file system security, and finally user behavior. Notice that this list of layers starts at the bottom and rises to the top. That's because in technical terms, any group of interrelated and dependent items is referred to as a stack, starting with the lower foundation levels and rising to the top. Typically the top layer means you the user and the software that you interface with. 
Understanding this layered approach is not required to complete the steps in this system, of course, but we believe it's important that you have a basic understanding of these concepts so that you begin to think about your PC using this approach. In the long run, it may help you to make more prudent decisions regarding security and how to keep your personal information safe. Now let's take a quick look at what each of these layers means with regard to the security system, beginning with physical security. Physical security refers to the actual physical access of your PC at home or at your small business. It should also include all networking components and your DSL or cable modem. In the corporate world, this is far more of an issue because most security breaches are not committed by outsiders but by employees or those with physical access to computer systems. This system is not designed to directly address physical security, but rather to educate you with the facts. Please be aware that most problems in business and with most home PCs start from within, so it's critical for you to ensure that only authorized users touch your equipment so that you're protected at all times. Then there's network security. This category includes any networking device that you may have in your home or small business, such as routers, switches, firewalls, network cabling, your DSL or cable modems, and any other network-related device. Moving on, there's PC security. PC security includes everything on your PC, beginning with hardware programming provided by the manufacturer, to device drivers, which allow things like network cards to operate, to the operating system, which in this case is Windows 7, of course, to all other software that you run on the PC that may be open to attack, such as Windows Internet Explorer. Next is file system security. File system security refers to the files stored on your hard drive and the way that Windows organizes and secures them. In this chapter, we'll review where your operating system and important files are stored, how they're stored, if you're using the more secure NTFS file system, and if appropriate security is being applied to these critical areas. In the advanced level, we'll introduce file encryption and step you through the process of installing it. File encryption is a technology where you scramble important data on your drive in a way that cannot be unscrambled without your password. Using your password, the files are unscrambled so you can use them. Looking at the graphic example on the screen, your social security number is encrypted and stored as scrambled ones and zeros. When you need to use this information, you'll enter your secret password, and the encryption software will then convert the scrambled ones and zeros back to your usable social security number. When you've completed your work, log out, or restart your PC, those important encrypted files will automatically go back to this encrypted or scrambled state for the ultimate security and safety at all times. There are many advantages to encrypting your important files. Without encryption, when you're away from your PC, or if it's stolen, the bad guy has access to all of your important information. With encryption, as soon as you log out or shut down Windows, you're safe. If others use your PC or if it's stolen, no one will be able to access your files without that encryption password, which is different than your Windows login password. And finally, there's user behavior. User behavior is probably the most important component of day-to-day -day security. No amount of security configuration using this or any other system will protect your PC if good user behavior is not followed. You may think that your antivirus and anti-spyware software will protect you from all threats. That's not at all correct. If you visit unsafe websites or locations that you're not familiar with, if you frequent sites that may not be considered mainstream, if you open emails from unknown senders and click on their links or attachments, more importantly, if you download files, software, videos, or other items from risky sites, no amount of security can ensure that you will not be attacked. You are the most important part of a robust security implementation. How would you know whether you should visit a site or open an email? If you're not sure about a website or an email, then that's likely to be your answer. Don't automatically open email from unknown senders or visit sites that you're not familiar with. Remember, the hacker community wants you to visit their site or click on an email link so that they can infect your PC. Harmful programs or viruses will almost always start with an interesting email, video, or a website to lure you in. Some of the riskiest things that a PC user can do is randomly click on unsafe email links or open files or follow web messages that you didn't specifically request, as well as browsing randomly from link to link on social networking or free file download sites. 
Windows 7 or your antivirus software may notify you of a risk regarding a website, email link, or a file download. If you're in the habit of routinely skipping by these messages, then of course you're placing your PC and its data at risk. Remember the rule. If you're not already familiar with the website or the source, if you've not previously done business with them, then maybe you should consider not interacting with them, especially if you're being warned by your security system. You may feel that a warning may not be warranted. If you believe that the website or its content is safe, and the warning is a false alarm, then take a minute to use Google or any other search engine, type in the website or the email link in question, and see what others are saying about it. You'll quickly find out if others have been harmed by these sites. Just a few changes to your typical web browsing, email, and computer behavior, along with the solid and practical security steps found in this system, will greatly reduce the possibility of trouble or intrusion into your most important computer resources. In fact, good PC security along with common sense habits will virtually remove the risks associated with today's powerful and needed online personal computing that you and your family have come to rely on. That brings us to the end of the series introduction. See you in a bit.